Hey, good morning. David Julin here, pastor here at First Baptist Cramerton, bringing our sermon for today. Let's begin with a brief word of prayer before we, before we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for life itself. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the family and the church. Lord, I pray now that you would help us to be grateful for what we have. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, some years ago, and I can't even remember the exact place, but I knew, I remember it being really hot, and we are out somewhere with my children and my wife, and all of a sudden, you know, people are upset, and Daddy decides, I, I spy something, and I'm going to be a hero, you know, and I look over, I spy popsicles, and I say, the guy selling popsicles, I told my wife, I said, hold on, I'm going to be right back. So, you know, Daddy's going to be a hero, and I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to solve everything. And so I go over there, and I get popsicles, and I'll be honest with you, I can't remember if it's when we had three children or four children, but here's what I do remember. I remember coming walking back with the popsicles, and I think I had three or four. I can't remember, but here's what I do remember. Two of them were red cherry, and one of them was grape, or maybe it was three. I don't remember, but here's what I do remember. I'm walking back, and I'm like really proud of myself. Here's the popsicles. I'm going to save everything, and I notice my wife gives me that kind of crook of her eyebrow, you know, kind of, kind of like that, and you know, and sometimes that means there might be trouble impending, but she doesn't say anything, and so then I present the popsicles, and all three of them say, I want the grape. Well, well you could th it's, it's hot, and here's these popsicles. That, that, they're going to taste about the same. No, I want the grape one. And before you know it, it deteriorates into destruction. And children are mad, and, and, and one takes the popsicle that they've gotten that's not the grape and throws it on the ground, and all of a sudden, where Daddy was going to be a hero, he's not a hero. We have nothing but dissension and problems. Jealousy. Envy. Coveting. You don't have to teach people how to do that, do you? It just automatically happens. I am struck by how often, when I read the scripture, how often jealousy and envy comes up as a problem, as a sin. Jealousy, envy, coveting. Coveting, a strong desire to have what is not yours, something that belongs to someone else. My contention, remember, these past few weeks is how do we deal with these things that, where we have a certain amount of control that will take away the joy that God wants us to have in life? And this week we're talking about jealousy, envy. Uh, jealousy, it's a wide range of how to define it, but it's a desire, the dictionary says, to tear down someone because of what they have or what they do or what they look like. It's a diminishment of who we are that results in a in malice toward someone else. We look at the very first murder that happened in Scripture in Genesis, Cain and Abel, where Cain, the brother of Abel, is jealous, is becomes angry, is envious of the sacrifice that Abel made to God. And God in some way, in some how accepts Abel's and not Cain's. And God says to Cain, beware, evil is at your door. Sin is at your door. You got a choice. But of course, Cain doesn't take it and murders his brother. Can anything be any worse than one brother murdering another? Can there be anything that pleases Satan any more than that? You know, we all have normal disagreements in marriages and families and work relationships, but what happens when those disagreements 
erupt into murderous rage. James says in James chapter 4, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have. So you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. In 2 in Corinthians chapter 12, Paul writes, For I am afraid that when I come here to the church at Corinth, that I may find you, that I may not find you as you want me to be. I fear there may be discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. So in the core of what he's concerned about, all those could really, the seed could be jealousy and envy and coveting. So what are we going to do to diminish it, to dilute selfishness and envy? Well, one, easier said than done, but gratitude, a focus on gratitude. Gratitude diminishes, dilutes envy and jealousy, developing an attitude of gratitude. Easy to say, you can roll off your tongue, but maybe harder to do. You see, a deep-seated sense that we are good and that God is good. Sinful, but also created in God's image. What is man that you're mindful of him? Psalm number 8. That you created a little him a little lower than angels, filled with glory and honor. You see, Satan causes us to question God's love for us and God's goodness. Remember what Satan said to Eve? Eve can't, comes in and they ask in the conversation about the tree and she says we're not supposed to eat of that tree and Satan says really? Uh, well here's what God's doing. He does not want you to know you will be like God knowing good and evil. He begins to put distrust of God and his goodness and his plan into the head into the heart of Eve. How very grateful you should be if when you were young, people celebrated your birth and celebrated who you were. How important it is for us as a church and a family and a community to celebrate those who, as they grow up, or to celebrate anybody. When people realize and are made aware that they that God is grateful, that we are grateful for them, that there is something good about them. How about when we how about when we understand it? What does it say in 1 Corinthians 4? What do you have that you did not receive? What, what, what goodness do we have? What life did we produce in our own self? What salvation do we have? It's, it, it, it's all, it's a gift of God. Love, salvation. Yet to all who receive him. And give the right to become children of God, John 1, 12. You see, salvation is a gift. And we have to be willing to receive it. Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, verses 1. Um, 1 and, let's see, chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace. How are we justified? Simply trusting in God. We have peace through God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, though through whom we have gained access by faith, by trust. Trusting in God, in the grace in which we now stand. I boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not in anything I've done, but what God has done for us. And we simply have to be willing to receive. The next thing I think is important is intentionally counting your blessings. That makes up gratitude. We know the hymn, Count Your Blessings, name them one by one. It's not just to be sung, it's to be done. Counting our blessings, our life, our salvation, doesn't mean we are not real. We don't have the... We, we live in an unrealistic world and we deny our, the problems around us. But how many times do we begin the day by counting the blessings that God has given us? 
next thing I think is important is to walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Pray to walk by the Spirit. Paul says in Galatians 5, 16, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not desire the gratify the desires of the flesh. For So, you see, sometimes the fleshy desires, we may have the sense it's all about sexual or excess or debauchery or drugs, but what God is talking about, fleshy, cannot be grateful for who you are. Not being grateful for for being created in the image of God. Letting the Holy Spirit live in your life and walk with the Holy Spirit. What are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, Galatians 5.22. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit as opposed to the flesh, the works of the flesh, The works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, and now listen to these that come from jealousy and envy, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, and all. You see, not believing that you are created in God's image, not believing that you have the Holy Spirit to guide you and help you, that can lead into dissension and sin. Jealousy and envy erupt. The seed that is planted erupts into factions and dissension and separation and discord. Oh, how often have I seen families that are torn apart by dissension and envy and anger think we have to pray for the Spirit to lead us, to walk with us. The next thing I think we need to mention is let's learn how to rejoice with others. You know the text from Romans 12, 15. Mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. Paul is calling the church at Rome there. Listen, don't leave those people who are mourning isolated. Help them out. Sit there with them. But also rejoice with those who rejoice. Lord, help me to rejoice with those who rejoice. When others are happy and rejoicing, help me to be able to do that too. That is not easy. But how much more joy can you have in your life if you find a way to rejoice in other good news? You need the Lord's help with that. Our friend Sigurd Bryan, who's passed away now, was so wonderful at this. He seemed to just harvest joy from other people's good fortune or other people's accomplishments. When he spoke to you and you had done something, he would just, he just had to see joy. And he's excited for you. That kind of presence with others builds gratitude and builds joy. It maximizes joy fruits of the Spirit, you see, push out the works of the flesh. The final thing I want to say to you is you have to remember you miss out when you let jealousy and envy overcome you. When you let jealousy and envy direct your life. Let's remember the parable in Luke 15 of the prodigal son. You know, we talk a lot about the prodigal son and his return, but let's don't let's don't uh, leave out the elder brother, the eldest brother, who comes back and I think justifiably is a little upset in some ways. Hey, you know, there's a party going on for this brother who left, sold what we had, and now he is the guest of honor at a party. Now, I don't like to psychoanalyze parables and all these type of things. It's the main focus of this is, is God's love and God's desire for those who are away from him to come back and be closer. But you do have to kind of sense that there is jealousy involved in several places in Scripture from young, in between siblings. And it's clear that the older brother resents 
the celebration for the younger brother. He refuses to be grateful for the younger son's returns. And, you know, the way Jesus leaves it, did he ever go into the party? Did he ever come in to celebrate? Or did he stay outside, bitter and resentful, angry? Did he let envy cause him to miss out? Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Don't let envy and jealousy and coveting others, what they have, what they do, who they are, cause you to miss out on the joy that God wants you in life. Lord, help us not to miss out. Help us to be filled with gratitude. And we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, I'm glad to be with you today. Uh, hope I can see you soon.